So ever since I've gotten to this whole building my own data center at home life, I have wanted to be able to take my desktop PC out of my office and move it down here to my server room. We're gonna make all the noise and produce all the heat it wants out of my life. And the one thing that's limiting my ability to do that is the ability to send high resolution, high refresh rate video signals from my gaming computer up to my gaming setup. So really what I need is I need to send HDMI or DisplayPort a long distance. And given the high speeds involved here, that pretty much requires fiber. And obviously there are technologies to send HDMI over fiber. The problem I have is that the audio video industry and the people who are experts in fiber didn't talk to each other about this shit. So up until now, I have been limited by the ability to pull through an HDMI connector through a conduit. Maybe a mini HDMI, if I got a mini HDMI cable instead. But basically, the cable would be end to end. So I would buy a cable of a fixed length, I'd have to pull it through a pipe all the way through my house, up to my gaming area. Then I could have nice high refresh rate HDMI over fiber and it'd be glorious. One of the great things though that network engineers learned long ago was that you can put connectors on your fiber. Then you can use the fiber for something else. So today I have in my hand an HDMI over fiber cable that uses standard off the shelf networking fiber, multi-mode OM4 with MTP connectors. So that's either an eight or a 12 way fiber connector I can run off the shelf MTP networking fiber through my walls when I build my house, for example, or I could pull it through a conduit and leave it there. Then I can buy these ends and plug them in. And then I don't have to replace the whole cable if something goes wrong. So I've been looking for this for a really long time. I am so glad that this guy showed up on my doorstep today. We're gonna take a look at it. So come along on this adventure. A few disclosures to get started. Repro sent me these two units for review. No money changed hands. They won't see this video until you do. If I have any links on the description, they will probably be affiliate links, but I guess we'll see. So let's take a look at what we got in the box. They're both the same, so I'll just open this one here. We got 30 meters, so that's about 100 foot. That should be enough to make it from down here all the way up to my gaming area. So inside the box, I got a user manual. We'll just toss that right out. So we have some warnings on bending the fiber. That obviously makes sense. Effectively, it's impossible to replace this fiber on your own. You would be just buying a new one if you broke it. So here we got the fiber itself. It's really a very small diameter. So we can pull the cap off here and we can see, gosh, that is just so minuscule. But it looks like this is a 12, 12 way. So there's 12 little tiny strands of fiber that pop through that tiny connector, barely bigger than my fingernail. And that is how we can send high speed data. And then these guys are the transceivers themselves. So we'll dump them out, have a look. So they've got a cap, which obviously makes sense. There's warnings about uh, not removing the cap and letting dust in there. Obviously dust is gonna be a huge problem for little tiny little beams of light. So don't take the dust cap off till you're ready to install it. They've also got a micro USB, which just powers it. Normal HDMI cables can be powered by their display, but in this case, we need extra optics. We need the lasers. So they come with little USB powers just to power the transceivers. So these are handed. So we have a source side and a display side and you have to get them right because this one will have transmit lasers. This one will have receive uh, photo sensors. And they'll also probably use one of the fibers to send data in the other direction for audio and stuff. These guys promise they support eARC too, so that's reverse audio channel. In addition to their 40 gigabits bandwidth, which is 4K 120, that's freaking fast. So now that I got these guys out of the box, let's pull some fiber. Now one last quick test before actually installing the fiber, I wanna make sure I don't have any latency with these things. Now I'm guessing, educated guess here, that these guys are just taking the four high speed differential pairs in an HDMI connector and basically running that straight into four lasers or V-cells or something like that and transmitting that over the fiber. So that shouldn't be doing any sort of buffering. It's just gonna be the time delay it takes to actually send the photons over the fiber and any time delays involved in the, uh, the laser and things like that. It should be negligible. So let's look it up and see. So again, be really, really careful when you pull this off and reveal the MPO connector. 
Don't want to get dust in there. Leave that on. I've got my USB micro power. This is an insanely satisfying connector here. So you can pull back the jacket and release the dust cover. Also pull out this dust cover. You can see this connector is keyed. So that would be the top. And there's the matching key. Ooh, wow, my phone can actually see one of the lasers, neat. So let's face that guy in there. And we're done. Ready to plug it in. So with literally no effort here, these two monitors came off my Linux system. I just set them to be mirrored in Linux. So these two are showing the same thing. It's coming from two HDMI outputs on my mini PC. So let's try the flicker test. So this is gonna flicker wildly. Don't watch if you're photosensitive. Basically this test flickers every single frame between black and white and adds a number on the screen to count. So by looking at the high speed camera at these two monitors, I can see what frame number each monitor is displaying. And if there's no extra latency introduced by the system, they should show the same thing. Unless of course there's differences in the monitors themselves. So let's take a look. I am watching this back on my phone now and it looks like they are perfectly in sync. There is no difference in frame delay for either of these two monitors over a plain HDMI cable or this fiber cable. No latency that I can measure. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's try some high refresh rate, high resolution stuff. So since my longtime followers saw what happened last time I drilled holes in the wall, I'm just running this along the carpet for now. It is technically an armored fiber. I still don't want to break it though, but it's fine for this test. So I ran the fiber down here to my kitchen table for testing. This is quite a long way from my gaming PC. Since the fiber only does display, I have brought myself some wireless peripherals here. These are just barely in range. So sometimes I miss key presses, which is not fun, but I've tried to put the dongles upstairs kind of as close as I can to this, far away from metal parts, stuff like that. Uh, this may come as a surprise to some of you guys, but I'm actually not really an esports kind of gamer. I really like virtual reality, which I'm not testing today. So I have borrowed this display for testing. This guy is 1440p at 144 hertz. It's not the nicest panel, so it's probably not going to actually look great at 144 hertz. But we can do the Blurbusters test and see if this cable can handle that much display bandwidth. I have no idea how well this will show up on camera. I know you guys are watching at 60 hertz maybe even less if you're on a poor display. So this guy, the UFO is moving across at 144, 72, and 36 FPS. And by looking at how blurry he is, or if he stutters, you can see if your display is actually running at the correct speed. And in fact, it is running at 144 FPS, 144 Hertz. This is at 1440p over this fiber optic HDMI cable. Now I know there's obviously more signals than just display in the HDMI signal. This monitor doesn't actually have speakers, but I can put headphones in and verify that HDMI audio is working. And it sure is. So what do you guys say to some Counter-Strike? Look at these graphics. Oh, sorry, did you want the, the real Counter-Strike? So yeah, full bandwidth, full refresh rate seems to work just fine. So now that I've used this guy, what do I think about the RuPro detachable fiber optic cable? So first off, I am extremely glad to see a cable like this adopt a standard networking connector instead of some proprietary shit or baking the fiber cable directly into the ends. That's what most of these fiber optic HDMI things do. They directly terminate the fiber into the HDMI connector end, and then you can't replace the fiber. You can't go through like a wall plate. Um, if you've ever had to run like fiber between multiple rooms, like HDMI fiber, you usually end up with an active optical cable buried in the wall, which is now unidirectional. It only goes one way. And then you have to have an HDMI wall plate. You have to fit this whole thing in the back box. Huge pain. So with this, you can buy the eight strand MTP fiber, which I'll try to disconnect here. This guy, run this guy through the wall. 
This guy does not have a direction to it, so you can use any fiber you want, even if it's made by another company. So MTP comes in a few different pinouts. There's 8, 12, 16, 24. This looks like it's a 12 strand connector, but they're only using seven of the strands. So in theory, you could hack up some multiplex cable to be use a 24 pin, split it out and have three of these, which would be kind of cool. Or you could just run three eight strand fibers. Another thing about cables like this is they're basically just taking all of the analog signals on the HDMI, sending them over lasers or VIXELs to the receiver side, and then sending some data back. It's probably need seven fibers. Four of them will be high bandwidth data, some will go in other directions. We have eARC. I wasn't able to demonstrate eARC in this video because I don't have any equipment that uses eARC. Same with HDMI CEC. I just don't use that anymore for stuff. Um, but high bandwidth video, standard HDMI audio, um, EDID, that kind of stuff all work just fine. So going forward from here, I love to see these guys make a complete line. So HDMI, DisplayPort, and USB 3. I think if we had all three of those running over MTP fiber like this, it'd be really nice and versatile for people to be able to run MTP fiber in their walls, which is a pretty standard networking fiber. You can use this for 100 gig ethernet. That's about the limit of ethernet, 100 gig. Obviously HDMI is not 100 gig, so it's perfectly fine over this as well. Um, display ports, not 100 gig either. USB 3, also fine. So with those three terminations, I would be able to do everything I'm doing on my desktop right now entirely remotely over fiber like this. So HDMI, I use HDMI for some of my displays. Some of my displays use DisplayPort. Most of them would be fine either way, so it doesn't really matter to me. The one that does matter is my VR headset that needs DisplayPort. So having one of these over DisplayPort would be nice for me. And then peripherals, stuff you plug in. If I could just have one of these with USB 3, if it can also do USB 2, that would be great. USB 2 and 3 are actually completely different things. You technically can find hubs that do USB 2 to 3, but they're really, really rare. Mostly used for like USB extension cables, but they exist. So they had one of these that did USB 2 to 3 or just 2 and 3 separately. And then I could have one of these for each of my displays and one singular USB 3. Can plug all my peripherals into that on a USB 3 hub at my desk. I'd be very happy. As to any downsides with these. So first off, if you're not used to working with fiber, this can be a little bit of a challenge. I mean, obviously all the parts come here together. Fiber is very sensitive to dust. It's very sensitive to how you clean it. Don't look at it in your eyes, etc. All the usual caveats of networking fiber would also apply to this. Also, depending on your display, this might not fit that well. It does have some thickness to it, which is obviously needed for the connector. It's also got the sideways micro USB type B. That's for power. I would have liked to see a USB type C in 2025. However, that is bigger than micro B and they're just barely fitting the micro B as is. So this would mean the, the dongle thing would have to get bigger to fit a type C. They could also use a different connector for power. It is just power. Or they could use a captive cable. I don't really like captive cables, but that's another option as well. The USB cable it came with is, this is literally the cheapest USB cable I've ever seen. Um, it's just for power. It doesn't matter. But if it breaks, I would not be surprised. Now, aside from that little cable, the quality of the rest of this feels great. So this fiber, it says on the jacket what it is. Let me read it. Armored optical fiber cable 8X multi-mode 50 slash 125 micron OM3 LSZH. So this guy is eight strands of fiber. It is 50 micron multi-mode OM3, really standard networking stuff. It would not be hard to buy more fiber like this from a normal fiber company, put it in your walls, etc. This is, um, LSZH rated, low smoke, zero halon. So in most places, that's a good enough rating to go in a wall and definitely in a conduit for sure. So I would not worry about pulling this thing through a wall. It is armored. In this case, I believe it's with aramid fiber. Um, it's not metal armoring, so it should be fine. Don't kink it, don't try to break it, but it'll probably survive whatever you throw at it, pulling it, etc. Oh yeah, this is standard MTP networking connectors. So there's the same stuff that's used by like 100 gig ethernet, 40 gig ethernet when it's run over OM3. So you can get wall plates for this stuff. You can get patch panel inserts for this stuff, keystone jacks, inline couplers, fiber cables, all that kind of stuff online super easily for this MTP connector. It's not hard to find. I'll put some links in the description if you want to do keystone jacks with this stuff. Uh, if you want to chat with me anymore, Discord server link down below. I mostly do like home networking stuff, um, Proxmox servers, virtualization, but 
this kind of stuff is also my jam. I do really want to move my desktop down here, virtualize my desktop, or at least just rack mount it in the rack, if it even fits in the rack. Because um, it's kind of loud and it produces heat and I don't like those things. So this will be a great step into moving my desktop down here. If I can just solve the USB problem, then I'll be good to go. Uh, I do have a Kofi as well. It's kind of like a Patreon, but it's only a one-time thing. If you want to give me a tip, I greatly appreciate that as well. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next adventure.